So hello and welcome to my Floss Tube update. It's been quite a while since I've done one, um, no particular reason. I thought I was going to do one a number of times and then other things happened or it just wasn't the right time. So here we are, I don't know, I think, was it end of December or beginning of January I did my last one? I think it might have, yeah, it might have been that long ago, but never mind. So I've got a few things to show you today. I've got um, some finishes and I have one FFO to show you as well um, and then just a few purchases. I am participating in the Stitch from Stash and I've done pretty well with that um, so I can run through what I've bought. Sorry, lost track already at the beginning. See I'm out of practice now but I'm not going to edit, I'm just going to keep going um, and just run through everything I've got. So what should we start with? So we'll start with some finishes. So I've just realised I haven't bought the book that I stitched this from, but this one was a finish from last year, but I've only just got round to adding all the charms and the beads on it. So this is my um, pattern by Helen Phillips, um, and it's called The Potting Shed. I'm hoping you can see that. What have I got? I've got an envelope here. Put behind it to help you see. That's a bit better, isn't it? So this is The Potting Shed, and this is by Helen Phillips. And as I said, I actually finished all the stitching on this last year, but I hadn't added on um, the charms, and there's a couple of... Can I see any of the... Yeah, that's one of the buttons. That's one of the kind of a clay pot charm. Then there's um, some little charms, and then some beads just kind of randomly throughout the place. So I finally sat down and got that done a couple of weeks ago. I'd been doing, what I've been doing? Oh, I'd been adding um, buttons to another project and beads. So I thought while I had the beading needle and everything out ready to do it, I would get on and, and do that one as well. So now that's just waiting for the next stage. So I think this one I'm going to try mounting myself, um, but I've not ever done any of that before. So I'm not sure how it's going to get on. And I did, I did, I did buy some mount board. Um, but I underestimated the size of this one, so the mount board is A4, but this is actually bigger than A4, so I'm going to have to go back and buy some more. Let's try that one out. So that one is by, I'm just going to look at my bookshelf over there, it's from Helen Phillips Cross Stitch Garden Notebook, that one. Um, so that's the first kind of, well, kind of finish, I don't know how you want to count it, but yeah, it's done. And the other one that I was finishing to get that when I did the beading and things, this one. So this is my Country Cottage Needleworks Santa's Village and I have my FFOs next to me so I'm just thinking I might be able to use it. Yes, display, excuse me, <laughs> display this. So this is, it was all lovely and ironed and finished but it's been folded away for a while but this is my Santa's Village complete. Can I get that in? I think so. There you go. It does look a little bit creased but um, I've gone in and I've added, as you can see, the buttons and then there's beads for the eyes. Um, each each of the patterns comes with a little button and I've added all of them on. I wasn't um, entirely sure if I wanted to do that for all of them and um, I never read instructions so I always get caught out if things are using more than two threads or, or um, specialist instructions because I'm really terrible at reading instructions. So um, I didn't read until too late that if you were using the beads not to stitch certain parts of patterns. So for example, under this star, I'd already stitched the star. Um, and I did the same for the Helen Phillips one because on that one I actually unpicked and then put the, the so like the clay pot, I stitched two of the pots and then had to pull it out, the stitching out. Um, but on this one I've actually not pulled the stitching out, I've just added the bits on top. And I don't mind it because I kind of think actually if you're looking at it from the side and you see the star, you can see that there is, there's not a blank space behind it. So, so I, don't, I don't know if I can do a close up, I might have to... Um, Hold it up so I can kind of do it like that and across and then the next row 
all the way across and then my bottom row is there. I've been and I've been working on this for years and in that time I've loved it, I've fallen out of love with it, I've made loads of mistakes on it. Um, but I have to say I actually do really like the finished product and I'm really pleased that I've got this one done and kind of out of my whip pile. The one thing that's stopping me from doing anything else at the moment is Mrs Claus. So if we have a look at Mrs Claus, I can't quite decide whether I think she needs a mouth. So I've put the two beads on for her eyes and Santa Claus is a bit different because of course Santa has a beard so I don't think it looks odd that he doesn't have a mouth um, but Mrs Claus doesn't have anything so what do you think? I am thinking I do need to do something but I'm not quite sure so one of the things that I thought I'll do at some point is I'll have to get um, I'll have to go looking online and seeing what other people do because that's how I usually get my inspiration is go and have a look what everybody else has done and of course, because I'm about four years behind everyone else doing this one, um, lots of people have finished, so I can go in and <laughs> look at all their ideas. So yeah, so this was, um, in terms of the fabric, ooh, I think it's a 32 count linen and it's just a kind of a natural beige. I don't quite, re I can't remember. I've had it, f obviously I've had it for so long. I don't know if I ever wrote it down, actually. I do have um, a cross-stitch book, but... I'm really bad as long I'm bad at reading instructions I'm bad at writing things down so um have a look because I know people like to know these things there you go nope did never write it down I think part of it as well was because I started this after I already started stitching this so yeah sorry <laughs> um and I have actually um bought some finishing fabric for that as well so my local patchwork shop um Vista Wools had a sale um about a month or so actually longer than that probably away uh, probably a couple of months back um and there was some perfect fabric for it so I have that kind of ready to go and I even bought some batting as well to do it so although the bat I bought the quite a bit of batting because I thought I'd be able to do the garden notebook finish but well at one point, at some point, I will be all ready to get this done. So my next finish is this small heart in hand pattern, the ABCs of Christmas, and I'd started it this year, I think, um, probably sometime in February. I started this one because I remember stitching on it. Um, when my car was in for its MOT and that was in February time so um, I, this was is charted to be stitched um, in weeks colour um, and on the they used a confederate grey linen although that doesn't look grey to me that does look quite beigey um, but I didn't use that I used I've used a real mix actually I have used some weeks if I had the weeks I used it could stitch from stash but otherwise I changed it out and used DMC um, as charted and I think there was one DMC colour I can't remember oh I've just realised I've missed a bit there's me saying I've finished it oh it's worth doing this then isn't it I've just realised I haven't sewn Santa's hands oh <laughs> so you look at the pattern and then you look at this and I think oh did, what colour did I use for that because the kind of the fleshy colours I did use the DMCs. Oh, well, there's a job for me after I've done this. And I stitched this on, um, I think it's a 28 count um, even weave, I want to say. Again, I've not written it down, because why would I? Um, <laughs> but it's this spotty fabric that I've used. So you can see some of the very great variegation in the green here. So that was one of the week's ones. But I know um, this pink round here, I think it was charted for um, Poncietta. Yes, but that's that's a DMC pink um, that I used. I think that the, the red was a DMC instead of a, um, 
of weeks. And in fact, thinking about it, the alphabet as well I changed. So the alphabet was charted for a brownie colour. Was char um, Is it onyx? Is that how you say it? O-N-Y-X? I don't quite know how to pronounce it. And I changed this out for... Oh, I'm gonna... That's going to annoy me because I do, I do know but I can't think. So it is a variegated but it's a grey variegation. And you can see it's it's quite a bit darker kind of up here in places and then it kind of gets a bit lighter as you go down. I'll have to look that one up and I'll if I remember I'll put it in the details below. Um, but that this truly was a bit of a stitch from stash project because I had the pattern and I had all of the bits and pieces I've used but I definitely didn't go out and buy anything um, extra to do the pattern with. My next one Take it out of the packet so you haven't got too much of a glare. I've got the sun coming in um, on this side and um, if you hear any noise in the background I've got a neighbour who's playing on his bike so you might just be able to hear him heading off. Um, it's quite loud. I've got all the windows open because it's a nice day as well but it's also, um, is it flywheel this weekend? So it's been great because I live near um, the airfield so it's not a commercial airport but it's a it's usually um, a glider um, field so you get lots I get gliders and then small light aircraft but because of the event they've got this week I've had all sorts going over so I've had a spitfire this morning and a hurricane and just lots of things going on out there so it's been quite fun today to um, you have to pay to enter but I've kind of benefited from seeing it all just by being in the garden and sitting in my front room as well so you know not that I'm cheap or anything but <laughs> it's nice when you get things for free. So this next one is Little House Needlework and this is, can I read that backwards? No, Giving Thanks. So again this is a fairly new start. Did I start it this year? I think I started it this year. I've had a bit of a, because I didn't, wasn't starting stuff last year unless it was gifts or presents so I've been very much more starting stuff but it's um, this year but it's been very much I finished something and then I'm allowed to start something in its place and because I've had quite a few finishes so I've been pushing myself to get some stuff finished um, I've been able to start things which is quite nice so uh, and it's really nice actually I, I've always kind of thought I'm a bit of a process sit stitcher, I'm not particularly a, a kind of a, a finisher, I don't need finishes, but it's been so nice to get some stuff done recently actually and um, I can see that my whip pile has gone down quite significantly, in fact I've got three empty project bags at the moment which uh, is unheard of for me, <laughs> I've got um, so, just so much, <laughs> it's, um, I'll start... Uh, not, not feeling overwhelmed but just starting to think when am I ever going to get all of this stuff done um, so loving Stitch from Stash so all, all of my starts have been from Stash so this is this one there you go can you see that one this was um, kitted up when I bought the chart so it came with the thread that I've used in it and it's Weeks um, thread and then the linen was again something I had in my stash and I'm pretty sure this is a 32 count and again it's just a natural linen. It looks a bit different colour. Yeah, it's a different colour from the one I used for um, Santa's Village but yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I have made a mistake in this one so if you watch my videos from um, at any time and you watch the one where I was talking about this one I'd put it down because I was um, half a thread off and the and it was half a thread off in the top line so the the gap between the t and the h here is too small but i lined up all of the stitching on the row below to match up so i just thought i'm just going to stitch on and see how much it bothers me and then think about whether i'm going to take it out but also i wasn't sure how much thread i had because it was part of a kit um but having kind of stitched it all and finished it I have to say, I'm not particularly bothered. <laughs> so because the stitching in the letters line up, the bit where you would notice it 
um, if you're looking, is where the D here is below this bit of vine. Again, I think you'd have to look quite closely to see that that was a problem. I'm not going to be looking that closely. So that's a finish. Now this next one, hmm, I didn't pull the magazine that I stitched this one for. This is as this is going to be part of um, a banner for the Milton Keith Stitch Retreat. And everybody volunteered to do a letter and I said I would do the letter T, I think, in Milton, I think. But there's a couple of T's, so I, I'm not entirely sure because it was a while ago I said I'd do it. And this, this, is, this I did on a piece of 14 count, no it's not 14 count, I think it's 18 count. In fact it might tell me. I think it's 18 count, I think it's 18 count Ada, um, but it's... Um, gridded Ada so I've um, but it, this has been washed and pressed many many times to dry and try and get it all the creases out of it um, and this is an Emily Peacock design and she did this um, as a series alphabet series in cross stitcher magazine and I've actually stitched some of these letters before but I did them in wool and it's the other side of the room so I can't show I've shown it before on my video um, and I've spelled out, I used the letters to spell out home as part of a cushion. So this is my first time doing it with DMC thread. Um, and this I stitched, I started and stopped three, four times because um, we were given the size that it, it, it was to be. And I think this is just, just within the size that it needs to be because it is on the big side. But I wanted it, if it was part of a banner, to have impact and actually to be able to see it from a distance. And I think I've achieved that. I think I've got it. But I did it by doubling the, the size. I can't quite remember how, but I've I increased it. In fact, I know how I did it. It's because it, so instead of stitching over one, I've stitched over two on 18 count. And then to get the coverage, I ended up using... I want to say I've used three strands. No, I think it might be four, actually. Let me have a look. I'll tell you, I stitched it so many times to try and to try and get the coverage and the the kind of um, visual impact that I wanted. I think I went with four in the end, so four over two on 18 count. Um, so that made it much bigger, because when I tried it, I think I started on 14 count, two over one but it was quite small uh, yeah you know the drill so I'm really pleased with this is the way that this has come out in fact all I need to do now is send it off I don't quite know why I haven't um just haven't got around to it yet so that's that's my tea that will be joining all the other pieces that people have done oh and I did add my signature to it well I, I changed my signature a little bit so I just put my first name so I've just put Claire down here and I impressed myself by doing um, a really nice chunky, looks a bit like it's pulling out. Mm. French knot for the eye. I think it's alright. And that's another finish. So that's what? That's one, two, three, four, four finishes. And then the Helen Phillips Garden Notebook that's been finished. And then my final finish, so my FO, is from Cross Stitcher magazine, and this is issue 285. Um, so this has been out a couple of years. I don't know when this came out. You, you can usually tell when you look at the adverts. Um, that's how you can usually date things, but there's nothing in here that's going to give it away. Let's find the pattern. So I have stitched baubles and bows, which is this Christmas wreath. Um, and I love this one as soon as I saw it. Oh, I've got a date here. It's November 2014. So this has been hanging around for a while. I'll just tell you, it's by Maria Diaz. Um, so they stitched theirs, it looks like an even weave or a linen, let me check. Yep, yeah, 32 count light grey linen. 
they used for theirs. Now I haven't done that again. I was I wasn't doing stitch from stash when I started this, but um, this was a piece of it's either fourteen or eighteen count kind of sparkly Ada, which is a pig of a fabric. To say it's not my favourite because the 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 kind of metallic metallic thread that runs through it kind of um, shreds your floss so I, I can't say it was particularly fun but I'm really pleased with how that one has come out so another finish so I did make a few changes for this one so I changed the fabric <laughs> there's a few changes because I went wrong a few times um, but the green in this one um, was my I think it's my was my first time stitching with um, silk so it was charted for DMC 958 which is that one oh, that my true color just see if I can get the light off it um, and I switched it out for this <laughs> I really should take better care of things, shouldn't I? This little pile of silk floss here, um, this one here. So I don't know how well you can see, but the DMC, because I you look at them and I think, it, even in person, I think they look quite similar. But when I was stitching, I accidentally stitched with a bit of this quite late on. And I was looking at the, the ball ball that I used it for and I was thinking, that doesn't look quite right, it looks darker. And that's when I realised I was stitching with this one. So it does stitch a shade darker than this this one. And this is a Karen Twa Cristal. Um, and it doesn't have a name that I can see. It's just a 12 ply silk. Um, and it's colour 8084. And I really like stitching with that. It was really nice. Feels lovely. Um, but um, I finished that, I think, last week. So I haven't put anything away yet, so all my floss for that was just in the tin, so I need to take it all apart and put it back where it belongs, and that's my leaf needle minder that I wanted to give away from Jessie Marie. So, and I love it, I didn't realise, it looks like it's quite substantial, but it's really light, so I use this one quite a lot, and it's it's got a very good magnet on it, so um, I do like that one. The needle sits quite nicely, um, okay, because I do just have a needle here. And before I started, I managed to flick a needle over onto the floor, so I need to make sure that I remember to pick that up. It does sit quite ni nicely in the middle of the stem, so it's quite secure on there. That's another finish. Another one. <laughs> it has been several months. I don't normally finish this, this many projects in a go. Um, and then my... Ooh. There's kind of a finish, but not really a finish. Um... I'm stitching Lizzie Kate's, I'm just going to take this off the Keith mats, or the R&R &R craft frame, because I don't use, don't have proper Keith snaps. These are the ones that they sell in the, the UK there, the R&R &R craft frames. I think you buy, I think I bought these at Hobby Craft, I think. Um, so I've been stitching the Six Fat Men. So when you last saw it, I was working on... Let it snow. So this was number five out of six that I needed to stitch. I haven't quite finished it because there's one colour that I knew I had. Let's use this again. I'll show you what this is in a minute. Um, oh, oh <laughs> going well, isn't it? No, that's too high. There you go. So let it snow is mm. need need another hand. <laughs> it's just here, and it's not quite finished because I need to go back and add some snowflakes, and um, there's just a colour missing from the hat that I had stolen that colour out of the project bag to use for another project bag but I have put it back now so I can go back and do it. Um, so I've also so I've done a bit of thread there, I need to catch that. So I've done this one and then I, I've just done this this um, during this week and now I'm just working on this bottom one here um, and that will be finished. So you can get them 
You can do them individually or you can go to the Lizzie Kate website and you can get the um, layout here for putting them all together, which is clearly what I've done. So there's some stitch, there's some, what does it say? Let it snow, because I've got let it snow. Let me have a look. I'm not sure, because there's two bits of paper. Oh, um, snowman melt my heart goes across the top. Although that's charted to be in the, it's whitewash is the white that's used in this, so it's a variegated white. Um, but this, the, the fabric I've used is a Crafty Kitten fabric. Um, oh, I'm not even going to pretend to know what it's called. <laughs> um, so, and I don't know if the the wording in white will show up very well, so that's the, that's the let it snow. Um, so this, the stitching here, that's, that shows up quite well, and I think it shows up quite well. Can you read that? No friends. So I'm thinking I might switch out that colour, just so it has a bit more impact. Because originally they would have, they would stitch this on a, again it looks like a beigey. It's amber linen by Witchalt that um, was used for the um, model stitching. And obviously again I've gone off piece. I know it's a 28 count and I know it's by Crafty Kitten. So, and it is a really lovely colour. So this isn't, I've not counted this yet as a finish, but I was hoping to get this finished this month. Um, so I'll, that's why it was on the key snap. So I'll do a little bit more work on this this morning, but it's, this morning it's what quarter to four in the afternoon today and this weekend um so what is it today it's the 24th of june so how many days in june are there i don't know is it 30 or 31 i think it's 30 so what's that just under a week i might not get it done by the time because well stitching letters is quite quick but i think by the time i've gone back and there's kind of some snowflakes um, kind of individual pin stitch snowflakes to do on this one and that's going to take quite a bit of time um, and again I need to make a decision because this bird I'm trying to decide see I think you can see that this is a cardinal I'm presuming he's got he's charted to have a nice eye but this one down here doesn't have an eye and I'm kind of thinking that's a bit weird I mean this 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 bird has got an eye. Oh, that's fine in there. Although it's quite difficult to see. Maybe I just need to check the pattern. I've not read the pattern wrong. Um, but yeah, it's almost there. It's almost there. And of course, I want to get it done because then it will count in the stitch from a stash um, for this year. Although I might be all right not to count this in my budget because I've I've been doing okay. And as yet, I think I'm in the negative at the moment, but I haven't counted any of these finishes um, to kind of top it into the positive balance. Um, it was just I hadn't got around to doing it. So I knew I've spent money knowing that I can, that I was able to spend money. So my last one is an FFO. And this one you'd have seen many, many times. Um, and I've done all of most of the cross stitching actually um, one thing I found when I went back and looked at it that there was a few places where I'd missed crossing a stitch um, I think there was two of those um, but then there was all the back stitching um, oh no I've done some of the back stitching but most of the back stitching and this is my Boffy Threads cut through haberdashers you can see I got it at a bargain price again I've been stitching this one for years um, I seem to remember I started this when uh, 24 watching the first series of 24 but I didn't watch it when it was on TV I got it as a as a disc set from the library and it was one of those things where I remember sitting watching and stitching and just thinking I'll just have to watch one more episode just one more episode <laughs> a bit addictive um, so yeah so it's been around for quite a few years and this is my FFO so you'd have seen that there's been um, a photo frame 
So I had this framed just last week. And oh, how can I do it without getting the glare? You can see the TV's on. I don't know if there's a way to do it with no glare. I don't think there is, even if I go back. There we go. I have taken some photos of it unframed, so if I can figure out how to insert them, I will do that. But I'm really pleased with how this has come out. It's much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, I think I realised that as we were kind of laying it out when I went to um, the framers. Um, and we went with quite a bold colour. I'll just put it here so you can see. So I tried lots of different colours here to try and get one that would work. Um, and I went kind of, I was picking out, so you can see, there's, <laughs> kind of see through the glare, there's lots of different colours in this, um, put it down because it's heavy, lots of different colours in the pattern. Um, so I tried lots of different frame combinations with it, so you can see I tried ones where there was more greens to it, I tried some with these natural kind of reds and beiges and um, kind of earthy colours. And they all look quite nice and tonal. But actually this is quite a... And I agreed with... I was chatting to the guy who does the framing. And um, he kind of quite right... He made a comment. He said, oh, it's quite a modern cross stitch, isn't it? Um, actually, I took it to him. And he's done quite a few um, cross stitches for me. And he was like, oh, well, this is one of those bothy um, cut-through ones, isn't it? So he recognised the designer. He recognised the series. So he clearly he's done quite a few of these ones. Which made me feel quite comfortable leaving the cross stitch with me with him but he was saying it's quite these ones are quite modern so actually that's why we landed on the combination of the red and the blue because they're it's kind of that got that brightness to it and I am really pleased with how it's come out and it's so nice to have this one done as well so another one that's been hanging around for a while and, and finished so um, and this obviously is a kit I have to say I did get rid of all the floss that was with it because it was such a mess and I think it uses um, What's say is it Madeira? Is that is that the brand that comes in it? Um, so it wouldn't go into my DMC stash, um, but it's a fourteen count Ada. It's like a light blue colour. Um, yeah, love it. I love um, the bothy kits. So yeah, that's my FFO. So I'm quite quite a productive few months, even though. So I might not have been here, but I have still been stitching. Um, oh, I have done some other stuff, but this isn't finished, so, you know, can't get it all done, can I? Um, I've got the other bits to show. I pulled out my Mirabilia, because I think I might have stitched on this for about two nights, so I don't think I did very much. Um, this has been hanging around for ages, but this is Elizabeth, um, and I think I put in these darker colours, darker purples here, and then brought this line down, just down here. Um... So yeah, so not a lot of progress on her, but I actually love her when I'm stitching on her. She just seems to kind of, because she's, I think in my head, I think she's a big pattern. When I've been looking at all the other stuff I can pull out and get finishes on, this one got relegated a little bit. So she has been a little bit neglected, especially when you consider she was a new start. Was it last year? Was it January last year when everyone started doing Mirabilia? So it was, it was a bit of a thing, wasn't it, on Facebook and, and, and Flosstube, where a lot of people um, did a, as their New Year start um, a Mirabilia. And that's when I started that one. And, and almost, I think everyone else has finished theirs. <laughs> I might finish mine another couple of years, but, you know, there's no rush. There's no rush. Only that I want to start other stuff. Um, what's in here? Ah, yes, I can show you on the front. So I've done a little bit of work on this one. This is what well, says wishes come true. I don't actually know if that's what it's called. Let's have a look. So I've not done that stitch that many because it doesn't fall open. There's a better picture. It's called make a wish. And this is in the Bell and Boo series. So this is the second one I've stitched in the series. So I've used the same fabric. So it's a blue fabric from my stash. And 
last time you saw this I've done her top and this time I've just added the skirt so not a huge amount on her but um, I've put all of my remaining whips in order in the, I have a whip basket which all my project bags sit in and I've put them all in order and that's why I've, I've just been pulling out what's ever at the front and that's going to be what I'm working on and most of them I've just worked on till I finish them so I don't do rotations um, I'm, you know I, I'm not that organized but I can just work by just pulling out whatever is at the front and working on that so that needs to go back over there so I won't I probably won't work on that until I finish the snowman so I know that I'll just work on that until that one's done um, and then I think after that one the one that's at the front I'm just looking because my whip basket's over there I think the next one is my sunflower fairy which would be quite good to get that one finished um, but I need to, I've been doing some unpicking of her skin which was my first attempt at one over one and it's a bit of a nightmare to to take that out but it's just the wrong colour so well it's stitched in the right colour but it just doesn't look right so I was very lucky I had a holiday in May I went to North Wales for a week um, I did take a little bit of video of where I went and again if I can fig figure out how to um, clip it in I will do that um, but I thought holiday I'm going to take a new start with me and because I'd finished Santon's Village I thought I could start something quite big so I pulled out my kingdom of books this one which I absolutely love and I've just found out there is a kingdom of books stitch along group on Facebook so I have just joined that one as well to see what everyone was say, um, what everyone else has done haven't made I haven't done a huge amount on this um, I did laugh because somebody put on there the other day about you know who's got time to do the background well I am actually going to stitch the background. I did um and ah about it a lot, but I decided I didn't want to use a hand dyed fabric because I know it comes with a an Ada. I don't know if it's a fourteen count or I don't know is that a fourteen or a sixteen. It comes with Ada. I don't know if you can see the size of that. I think it's fourteen, um, and I knew I didn't want to use that, so I've switched it out for a even weave, a 28 count, kind of an off-white um, even weave and that's what I've done so far. So I've started in the middle with this bit here um, and I know that this is going to take me absolute years to do, that's fine, I don't mind patterns hanging around for a long time, it's nice when you see progress on them. But I thought it needs to be that I'm going to be able to wash it at the end if I'm using a pale fabric. So I didn't want to use a hand dyed fabric so that that would, I know others are using that to give the interest in the background so you don't have the bookshelf. So I thought because I'm just going to use a, a pale Ada, a pale even weave, I will be doing the, the background on this. So I've almost finished this top building. There's just a few more bits to kind of go around the edge and then I can start doing... Um, working on the background so and I think I think I did that in about a week so not too bad I didn't actually do that much stitching when I was away because um it was a beautiful cottage that we stayed in it was converted um I think it was probably a cow shed or something um so it was quite quite thick walls um and there wasn't a huge amount of natural light so stitching in the evenings was a bit challenging and of course I didn't have like all my proper lighting and things with me so um, I have to kind of do most of the stitching during the day and most of the time during the day we were out and about. I did find a stitching stop shop while I was in um, Wales but I found it on a Sunday and it was closed so I, managed, I peered through the window. Um, I was very tempted to go back when it was open but it just wasn't logistically um, possible but if any of you are ever there, it is in a tourist spot and um, oh, then going overhead, don't know what type. Um, it's quite loud. I don't know if it's going to come across as quite as loud as on here when I record it. So apologies if it is quite loud. <laughs> I think there's a few of them doing some kind of formation at the moment. Um, 
what was I saying? It's by, it's opposite the train station in Wales with the really long name. So it's, I, I have no chance of pronouncing it. <laughs> um, but you would have heard about it, I'm sure, all over the place because it's a very famous um, railway station. And it's, and it's a bit odd because it's in a very small, I don't know if it's a town or a village, it looks more like a village. Um, so you kind of, it's a tourist location, so there's lots of people there. But they've put kind of an outlet dropping bit near it, but quite a small outlet place. But it is literally just the train station. <laughs> so you, and you can walk onto the platform and you can look up and down, but it's quite quiet. So there's not that many trains that go through it, but it's very beautifully kept. So I can stand there and say that I've been. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, if you're there, the stitching shop is almost opposite the car park so you really can't fail to miss it um, if you go so just just if you are going then go on a Sunday um, I can't remember if they were closed any other time but it's but that's just typical isn't it um, but never mind stitch from stash I've got plenty to do so what else can I show you I thought this might be a quick video but I don't think there's such a thing as a quick video and I have to say I've been really I've fallen completely behind with floss tube um, I couldn't get, um, we could get Wi-Fi where I was in the cottage, but there was really thick walls, so when I was, if I went into my room to watch a bit of floss tube in the evenings, um, I couldn't get a decent signal, um, so I kind of fell behind then, and I was already behind anyway, and I just have not caught up, so I've barely watched anything um, for about two months, and I keep trying, but... I've also found that, that it's like this one's going to be, when they're really quite long, it's quite difficult to find that chunk of time to watch it. But, um, I mean, what a problem to have, hey? I mean, not complaining. And at some point, it'll be great to just kind of go back and and, and I'll watch at some point. I'm at, I'm at the point now where I'm thinking, um, I've watched the odd one here and there, that I might just watch the latest one when somebody puts something out and then if I ever get time I can go back but I have also added to my watch list which has made you know there's so many new people out there and so much interesting thing to see so who knows one day I might catch up I did watch a video a few months ago and participated in a giveaway and I was lucky enough to win now I'm having a complete blank. Hang on a minute. 